We are joined by head coach Josh Jurgens. As you know, the uh, Seton Cardinals are like everybody else, kind of caught in a little bit of a situation where you're not sure when you could be back and is there going to be a summer program and such. And, you know, Josh, uh, I know basketball is still a little ways away, but we also know that for you and other high schools, you try to do something in the off season. Your summer is coming up here very, very soon. What have you been able to do so far, if anything, to keep in contact with the players and make sure that they're trying to do something if they can? I usually just try to text them on the regular and, you know, try to stay in touch with them that way. Um, send them little workouts here and there. Try to, you know, get them motivated to keep doing something, um, making sure they're doing something. But as far as, you know, contact, there's obviously nothing we can do now. And, I mean, June's a huge month for summer basketball. And, yeah. You know, that's not looking like it's going to happen. And that'll just be weird. I mean, it's something that everybody's going through, but nobody has ever gone through. So it'll be interesting. But, as you know, we're all in the same boat here. Is there a contingency plan if June doesn't work out? Has there been any talk of maybe doing something in July? No, generally that's the moratorium month for mm -hmm. the IHSA. Would they move that or is there any talk at all? I haven't heard anything. I imagine they'd stick with that, you know, that moratorium week and keep that first week of July, you know, no contact and go from there. But, I mean, as far as open gyms and just letting us get together with the guys, I'm not sure how much the lacks on that. Um, I haven't heard anything so far. I, I would imagine, too, I don't know where anybody would be going and shooting or working out. You can't even go down to the park here in Richmond because they take the, the rims away, so you can't even you can't even right. get down there. What can the players really do other than maybe get out and run, and that's about it? Right, and, I mean, I've seen, you know, people down there at Williamsburg and renting out that gym and still being able to use it. But, I mean, as far as any gym or any court other than at your house, I haven't heard of any. Um, you know, a lot of my players have their own goals and they're out shooting with their brothers or doing that kind of stuff, which is good to hear, you know, as long as they're doing something and we get, we got some guys that need to get in shape. So hopefully we can get some running, all, all that kind of stuff. Done. You probably don't want to let anybody know that Williamsburg might be open. The government might come shut them down. Huh? <laughs> right. I think I just told everybody's secret. You know. <laughs> if, if, how far from a program standpoint will you be behind if you don't get a June and this thing drags into the fall. And I know the IHSA has talked about they're a little bit worried that football may not even happen. And who knows how that might bleed into the rest of the, of the winter. But how far will this hurt your program if you guys can't get out there and do some things? Well, I think it would be one thing if we were the only ones who had to sit at home and everybody else was still working. But everybody's in the same position. So it'll kind of level the playing field. Is that like everybody's going to miss June? You know, you're looking at July or August to pick back up, maybe. And I think as long as everybody's in the same boat, nobody gets that, you know, competition, that up level. So, you know, hopefully, you know, we can just get through it and move forward. Um, you know, we do have a lot of guys coming back. So yeah. that'll help as far as experience-wise and playing together. And, you know, they don't, they'll need less of that summertime um, to get rolling. But, you know, for those teams that have freshmen or have sophomores that they're relying on, you know, summer's huge. I mean, you get that summer league under your belt or those weekends where you're playing at camps, and, and that's huge to play together, even if it is for one month. Yeah. He, you know, Jake had such a good year last year, and I know that he was looking forward to showcasing again his talents this summer. Have you talked to him a little bit? And, and I'm sure he's probably pretty disappointed at this point. Yeah, I mean, he's itching to get back in the gym. He's texting – uh, you know, our coaching staff all the time, when can we get in the gym? When can you open it up? Dude, <laughs> our hands are tied like yours are, man. We want you in the gym. We want you working. So he's doing stuff at home. But, I mean, he he understands the future that he has in basketball, and that's why he wants to get to work and make sure he's, you know, not skipping anything and putting every putting everything in every workout he does. And I think now it's, you know, now it's, a, it's on him to make sure he's working hard at home because the accountability, you know, we're not going to ask you to come in the gym and be there you got to do it yourself. So we'll see who separates themselves, you know, when it's dependent on them to do the work. You know, Josh, this isn't just a, a physical thing. It's a mental thing. And there's a lot of people that are struggling. And I'm sure even from the high school level, young men and women that are kind of having a difficult time kind of grasping all of this. If you get a chance to talk to any of the players about just trying to keep focused as much as you can and not let it get you down. I know it's kind of tough because you can't do much, but, do you talk to them about that at all? 
yeah, you know, just kind of make sure they're staying safe and doing the right things and staying at home and, you know, urging them to, if they're going to work out, work out at their own place. Don't go, you know, somewhere else to work out and get it with a bunch of buddies and that kind of stuff. You just kind of urge them to take care of themselves. And, you know, it's it's easy to sit at home and get fat and just keep eating and not doing anything. <laughs> It's hard to get out there and do a few sit-ups, do a few push-ups, go run around in the yard. Um, so that's what we're kind of urging them to do is, you know, take care of themselves, take care of their mind and all that stuff. Um, you know, right now as a kid, getting a whole two months of school off, I mean, yeah. that would be great if you're a kid. But, you know, and adults in this situation, we're kind of stressing it. But from a kid's point of view, <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine they get kind of bored because the weather hasn't been exactly cooperating either. So. Right. Right. Yeah. You, um, you, I know you're looking forward to what's coming. As you said, you got a lot of kids back from last year's team. What did you guys learn from this past season? I know that it didn't end up the way you'd hoped it would. Fell a little bit short in the sectional there. But as you look forward, and if everything does happen the way you hope it does, talk about next year. Now, I, I'm excited for next year. I mean, we return, you know, five out of our top six. Um, and one of those was a freshman and, you know, the rest of them are going to be seniors coming in and we have a good freshman class coming in too. So that are going to be able to compete with the sophomores to see who gets that sixth, seventh, eighth spot on varsity. So, you know, it's going to be a fun year. Um, you know, we have the talent and we went through like last year we played with no experience and this year coming back, we'll have all the experience and that's just kind yeah. of how it works. And you got to take your lumps. And, you know, I told, I keep telling them, you know, we went through all that bad last year because we're going to have a lot of good coming this year. And as long as we learn from our mistakes and learn from our losses and understand the work you have to put in if you want to be a champion, you can't skip running on this day. You can't complain about this on this day. Want to work, embrace it. And I think these seniors will understand that. And I think we have a lot better leadership. We will have a lot better leadership now because the roles are more defined and you know the voice that's going to lead in every practice and every game. And you know the guy you're going to count on. You know, we have a good point guard in Jonah who went through a heck of a year um, and still averaged six assists and nine points. So, I mean, you know, there was – I think he scored – or he had over double-digit assists in seven games last year, which is huge for a point guard who'd never played varsity. So, now he's got a whole season under his belt. Uh, Sam Casper is a deadly shooter, and he's got a whole season under his belt now. And we all know about Jake. And, you know, we got a couple other role players that will step in. And, like I said, we got a good freshman class with a, you know, big six, 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 five kid coming in. So, um, that's a freshman that he's going to be able to play with Jake and hopefully we can have them two on the floor at the same time. And worst case scenario, we have a backup big man for Jake now. So, you know, we really like what we have coming this year. And I think, you know, going into last year, we kind of understood what it was that this is going to be a learning experience. It's going to be a struggle. Um, we beat some teams we shouldn't beat, but we got beat by some teams that we shouldn't have got beat by. So we need to learn from those mistakes. Um, and hopefully the kids kind of had an embarrassment to last year, kind of like a wake up call, like, oh, this isn't like we're that team that only won six games or seven games. Like, we don't want to do that again for our senior year. So, hopefully, they learn from that and they just come back and work harder and hungry. You know, you were a coach, at, you let the players play. And I know the one frustration, maybe a little bit last year, was the, the, the turnovers. And that's something you want to really cut down on this year. Talk a little bit about what the offseason program, if you do get something going, how you guys will work on that. And, and if you get a chance to go to shootouts and things, is that something you really concentrate on? Yeah, uh, the ball handling is a big thing for me. Um, I'm a big guy on the offhand. Like, I don't care how good you are with your right hand, how good are you with the left? Because these these coaches, these players we play against are too good. They're not going to let you dominate with one hand. They're going to make you go the other way. So we've really preached that to guys like Jake and Jonah, um, just to understand that offhand and not be guardable. If they're going to take away your right, okay, I'm going to go left and score on you or go left and set the offense up that way. So we were really preaching that. Um, we've been preaching that since day one. And, you know, that was one of the things in this offseason. Jake needed to tighten up his ball handling. Jonah needed to take care of the ball and understand what we're looking for in our offense. Uh, Sam can't just be a three-point shooter who chucks it or turns it over. Um, you know, he's got to be more than that. Other guys have got to be able to handle the ball and not be a liability if it gets in their hands. Uh, we want to put five guys on the floor that can score and handle the rock and not turn it over. Uh, last year, we couldn't do that. Um, this year, we should be able to with what we have from the back. So, it, we just – the fundamental stuff. I mean, you know, dribbling drills every day, passing drills every day, running our offense and understanding the cuts and what we're looking for and what we're trying to read in the defense. And I think that will help a lot. And, again – a year under Jonah's belt will help a lot when it comes to these turnovers. You know, I've been asked you, I think, in the past about what you do in the summertime as far as going to camps and shootouts and things. Are you guys pretty busy? As you said, 
if you can get things going in the month of June, how much do you guys play? Well, lately we've uh, we've done the Northeastern Summer League, which is up at Northeastern. It's all the TC schools, Wayne County schools, all these guys that get together. It's about 10 or 12 of us uh, local teams that get together and play every Monday night. So that's helped. And then weekends, we you know we hit the Centerville shootout. We hit a couple of local ones. Um, Desmond and Billy's senior year, I think we were going to like Indiana Wesleyan, Bethel, that kind of stuff to get more exposure for those guys. We were planning on doing that the same thing this year for Jake get him more exposure in the summer and June, go to those bigger camps, watch him compete against those guys. Because we think we have the team to go compete with the good teams, so we'll take us to camps and not just go up there and get our butts kicked and not learn anything. You know, we go up there and compete, show Jake off a little bit, show what we have a little bit, and kind of see where we're at. And we've done that in the past, and, you know, we've been successful with it. But last couple of years, we've kind of just stayed vocally. But this year, we were really planning on getting out to some colleges and, you know, getting some exposure. What uh, what does your schedule look like for next year? Do you know? I haven't really even looked at. Uh, I'm thinking more about football right now before <laughs> we get there. But what about basketball? What's your schedule look like? I mean, we'll open up in or, or with Northeastern and Earlham. Um, that's the plan. Open up with them the night before Thanksgiving, um, and then that weekend we'll play Centerville like we always do. And then I think you know Union County, Randolph Southern. We usually start with about the same five. I know we dropped Union Modoc this year and picked up Knightstown. Uh, we're working to try to get a game with Winchester. We think that'd be a nice matchup with the Sparks yeah. kid versus Jake. Um, you know, I, I like to play these local schools like North, or like Winchester, Eastern Hancock, Knightstown. Those kind of teams I'd like to get on our schedule because teams around here play those teams, and there's no reason we shouldn't play them. Yeah. Um, we shouldn't be going to Indy to play these small schools that nobody's heard of when we have a team right down the road that we could play that would be a heck of a competition. So – we're trying to work on that schedule and try to stay locally and maybe get to Indy once or twice, but not three or four times. And, you know, yeah. we want to play teams that teams around here have played and they're on our level and prepare, prepare us for the section. Yeah, plus, it's great interest. Yeah. I mean, if you go play Indianapolis Howe, most people don't really care too much about them, but they'd like to see a matchup between your team and Winchester and Northeastern. Right. So it draws a crowd. Right. And, that, you know, we, we would love to be able to play all these schools home and away. It's tough having to rent out them to play these local schools because we can't fit them in our gym and then people are hesitant to play us because they don't want to come to our gym because they won't be able to fit the fans so it is that that's kind of the struggle we face but we've been able to uh, overcome it you know with getting northeastern on the schedule union county centerville those teams play us and when you know when we started here those teams didn't play us so it is good that we're on that level to where those teams know that we're going to give them a good game and we're actually a good competition you know getting ready for section all right, now I asked about what uh, you you talked to the players and such and what they're doing, but what are you doing as far as just trying to keep your sanity in all of this and not, <laughs> not knowing any answers? And it's just, it's weird. You know, I try to do a lot of stuff around the yard, stuff around the house, get caught playing video games a couple of times. You know, <laughs> get playing caught. <laughs> you know, get caught, you know. Uh, playing, playing with the kids, you know, they don't have baseball this year, so I've been working in the backyard with my sons trying to, you know, get them some practice so they don't lose a whole year. You know, we've been working on basketball stuff. It's been nice to be around the kids all the time and to have that relationship without them going to school for eight hours. And then, you know, before you know it, it's bedtime. Now we get to hang out with them all day. Some days are rougher than others, but I'm sure everybody's going through that right now. I think you and everybody's fixing up their house. Every time I go to Menards or Lowe's, <laughs> the place is packed, you know, so. Oh, man, yeah, those, that's where everybody's hanging out. At yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, they put a, if they put a hoop in there, it might get some kids to go down there and play. Thank you, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, you listen, before I let you go now, you, you, your background is a little plain down there in your basement. Oh, yeah. so the next time we get together, you'll have some stuff up there. And Yeah, I'll try to hang up some jerseys or some signs, <laughs> or some Woody Page uh, signs behind me. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to mention, uh, I had asked you about Desmond, and I know that mm -hmm. He's pretty busy and everything, so we contacted him, and I got to go through his agent to get an interview with him. I'm, I wanted to say, you know, I need an agent too. So I guess I got to wait a few days, see what the agent says, right? Yeah. Four, what, four or five years ago, you just pull him out of practice down at the shop. <laughs> Has he said anything about, I look at a lot of mock drafts right now, and I haven't seen his name on all of them. I've seen on a couple but has he said anything about what he's planning on doing here in the next – and I don't know if the draft is going to happen. It's probably going to be a virtual thing. Has he yeah. said anything lately about what's going on there? Uh, not just that he's down in Miami. Um, he's been he's been staying down there and working out and uh, meeting with teams, you know, over Zoom and all that stuff because, um, you know, he can't really come home with his grandparents and all that stuff with everything going on. He's been traveling so much. 
So he's been kind of hunkered down in, in Miami, and they're taking care of him. Uh, he's living pretty well up there or yeah. down there. And, uh, hunkered down <laughs> in Miami. Yeah, it's 35 degrees here, and he's down there at 70. <laughs> yeah, he's good. You know, we've talked about the teams that he's gone through the interview process with and how's that gone. And the main thing he's doing right now is just selling himself and just getting himself out there and taking as many interviews as he can because we all know Des. If you talk to him, he's, you realize he's a great kid. He's a great guy. Uh, then you watch his film and you're like, oh, he's a great player too. So he's the whole package. You know, that's why he's inching into these, you know, late first rounds is because people are starting to get to know him and starting to see the numbers that he put up consistently for four years. And, I mean, that says something. And he's a 21-year-old senior, so he's a young senior. You're not taking a 24, 25-year-old. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's that's a plus. He's huge. He can shoot. Um, and, again, the kid that he is. I mean, just the person that he is. And, you know, that's what's going to get him drafted so high and get these people, you know, taking notice is just the person that he is and the numbers that he put up. So he's going to end up going to, you know, a good team if he goes late first round, you know, championship team that he can jump right in there. And I mean, if you give him a chance, every time he's bet on himself, he's won. So mm-hmm. I imagine he'll do that again. Yeah, I never put anything on I me. Mean, bottom line is he's had doubters his entire career mm-hmm. and he's shown every one of them. So I wouldn't be surprised at the next level either. So. Yeah, there hasn't been an opportunity that's been put in front of him where he's had to prove himself where he's failed. I mean, whether it's playing that last week in the AAU a senior year to get the TCU offer or, you know, going to TCU where nobody thought he could make it. He starts for four years. I mean, going to Seton when nobody thought he should, and he ends up leading us to number two in the state. So, I mean, it's Des. He, he does Des stuff. He always bets on himself, and he always wins. So. All right. And now I said last thing. This will be my last thing, but – you got to tell me honestly, does he tell you you need to go through an agent, his agent too, or do you get a direct line to him? As of now, I have his number. So I can uh, – hopefully that's who's answering my text is him. But as of now, it's the same number it has <laughs> <laughs> answered my text. So. <laughs> so far, so good. Very good. Coach, listen, thank you. And uh, hopefully you'll get some answers on basketball here pretty soon because I know you're probably like a lot of people uh, kind of chomping at the bits to see what happens. But hopefully if they – maybe start opening things up a little bit here in the month of May. They'll kind of look ahead a little bit and let you guys get to work again. But nonetheless, thanks for joining us. We'll talk again soon, okay? All right. Thanks, Troy. Stay safe.